Hey guys, Ivan here, and this video, as you can see, we are starting with a physique update of Nick Walker. And in this one, I gotta say, he looks more impressive than those previous ones that he was posting lately, because he's not as peeled anymore. I mean, of course, it only makes sense, he won't be walking around the entire offseason at like 2% body fat, so he did get a tiny bit softer, but... This is not soft by any means, he still is shredded, I mean, check out the lines, the, the, the striations, the separation in his chest, for example, like, there are lines everywhere, you can see fibers in his lower chest, in his upper chest, also check out the shoulders, very vascular, separated as well, there is basically no visible fat on his body anywhere, he's still, once again, shredded, really shredded, but maybe he is not exactly contest ready anymore, and he was contest ready for way too long if you ask me, I think he was in contest shape basically for like two months, maybe like he was one week out, two weeks out tops, maybe he would say he was three, four weeks out, but no, no, that was definitely like two weeks out, maybe even one peak week out of his best conditioning, and a lot of guys are not coming to the shows as conditioned as Nick Walker, I'm talking about his standard, his level of conditioning, so he was way too lean for way too long, finally he's starting to look like he's doing an off-season, but no, I mean, he's still way too lean, if you ask me, he's gonna get more chubby than this, unless he decides to do the Arnold Classic, of course. His rationale for why he's not doing the Arnold Classic is he doesn't want to risk making that hamstring injury even worse, because he doesn't feel like it completely healed yet, and that it won't heal completely until the Arnold Classic, so he cannot prep properly, but he just posted a leg training video, and it's a full leg training, it's not only quads, it's hamstrings as well, and he's doing compound lifts, like squats, leg presses, so he is definitely able to train legs already, and he's even training hamstrings directly, as you can see, he's doing lying hamstring curls, sitting hamstring curls, and on top of it all, he even did the RDLs, he did Romanian deadlifts, so he is obviously able to train those legs, maybe not at its full capacity, but he's still able to train them. If you check out the caption, it's very interesting, he says, let's start off the year with my first official lag day training. Wanted to put a lag day in on my deload week to see how things would go, and things went decently well. Was able to train quads at a very decent load, again, was a deload, so didn't want to push anything. Hamstrings wasn't really any pain, just some tightness, and a pulling feeling, so did not want to push that at all. You'll see the video, I tried some stiff leg deadlifts with 40 pound dumbbells. LOL. Now, I understand 40 pound dumbbells, that's extremely lightweight for Nick Walker, but still he's able to train not just his quads heavily, but he's able to do multiple exercises for the hamstring, and he's doing the Romanian deadlifts, which is probably the most dangerous exercise for the hamstrings. It's probably putting the most strain on the hamstrings, and he's still able to do some work, yeah, he doesn't feel exactly perfect, which I believe is normal after an injury, it doesn't mean that he's gonna tear it if he trains it harder, you guys remember, Branch Warren tore his quadricep, and like, six months later, he won the Arnold Classic, and that was a much worse injury, first of all, it's a quad, and second of all, I believe it was much, much more severe, I think he completely tore it off, what Nick did to his hamstring is, I think it's just a little rupture, it's nothing crazy, I mean, of course, he doesn't want to risk it, I understand, he doesn't want to you know, risk his career, basically, by injuring himself again, and going through the prep for no reason, and pulling out at the end, when everything gets more dangerous, as he gets super lean, but he is still very, very lean, I understand that he is scared, of course, I would be, it makes sense, but I still don't really see the reason for him skipping the Arnold Classic, I think he should do it. I mean, check out once again what he looked like in this guest posing after the Mr. Olympia, man, he looked like there was nothing wrong with his physique, his legs looked bigger than ever, probably, he overall was just shredded, super shredded, super hard and full, 
this was contest ready. I mean, he said something that this was like three weeks out. No, no, this is it. This is contest ready. He doesn't need to be much leaner than this, any leaner than this. Maybe he could be a drier leaner, yeah, okay, sure, but this is definitely enough. He would not embarrass himself, and I don't think anybody on the Mr. Olympia stage was this lean. Not Derek, not Hadi, not Samson, overall, you know, throughout the entire physique. I think this conditioning would be the most complete conditioning on that stage. And check out the hamstrings right here. Like, maybe there aren't the best separation in the left one, but it's good, like, he still has the mass. Also, nobody's perfectly symmetrical, and with this stance, one leg a little bit more backwards and one a little bit more forward, you wouldn't even expect his hamstrings to look exactly the same. So, overall, in my opinion, everything was perfectly fine at this guest posing, and I think he's okay, I think he can continue prepping and... You know, I think he can very successfully do the Arnold Classic. I know it's a little bit scary, it's a little bit risky, but a lot of bodybuilders would take that chance if they were him, I'm sure about that. Another Arnold Classic title, another $300,000, and if he does the Arnold UK, another $150,000, which is a lot of money, and I believe he could pull it off. I don't know if you guys follow Dennis James' podcast or Jay Cutler' podcast, but on both of them, Milo Sharce was very vocal that he believes that Nick should have done the Mr. Olympia, even though he injured himself like a week out. He believes even with a torn hamstring, even with a swollen leg, he could have won the Mr. Olympia. Now, I'm not gonna really take a stance on this right away. If you check out this photo of Nick's leg at that point, a couple of days out of the Mr. Olympia, there was no visible separation on his leg anywhere, it was completely swollen, it was bruised. If he stepped on the stage looking exactly like this, with one leg looking like this, he wouldn't do that well, and he definitely wouldn't win the Mr. Olympia. Also, he spoke about how he tore his calf right after he tore his hamstring, so he was also unable to walk, unable to stand, let alone hit the back double bicep, for example, or abs and thighs. Most poses really require you to flex your legs, to stand firmly. He was simply unable to pose. Yeah, maybe somebody could carry him on the stage if he was unable to climb the stairs, but he still wasn't able to pose properly. So yeah, I think it only made sense for him to pull out and not do the Mr. Olympia. However, interestingly, only two days ago, right after the Jay Cutler podcast, Dorian Yates makes a post about this topic. I don't know if this is a coincidence or not. I don't think it is, really, but Dorian made this post. It's about him tearing his tricep a couple of weeks before the 1997 Mr. Olympia, the controversial one where a lot of people felt like he didn't deserve to win. However, he tore a tricep, and it was completely swollen, it was really messed up, but he still pulled through, he was still training his legs, he trained his right side of his body, he did a cardio, he stayed on the diet, he did everything else. And on top of it all, he also says, after masking the collar with tan and icing it many times, I was going to give it my all, also my physio drew 30 milliliters of blood, fluid, from around the injured area the night before the show. He says, almost every minute leading right up to the contest, even on the stage, I was almost paranoid about anything involving the triceps, especially any mere touch when competitors often clash into one another when posing. Those last few weeks, in their own right, were a blood and guts performance. And that's the mindset of Dorian Yates, he just couldn't quit, he just couldn't pull out. Now, of course, a tricep is definitely much less severe injury than, you know, a hamstring injury, but, you know, maybe, maybe Nick could have tried, I don't know. In this post of Dorian Yates, he did everything but directly call out Nick Walker. I don't know if this was intentional, if he wanted to send a message, or it was just a coincidence, you guys can tell me what do you think. Anyways, Mr. Olympia is in the past, nobody can change that, but Arnold Classic is approaching and Nick can do that show.
If he doesn't do it, I'm already seeing a post by Branch Warren calling him out, not directly of course. In 2012 he won his second Arnold Classic title only about 6 months after a really bad quad tear. So the question is, is this hamstring rupture or whatever it is, it wasn't even a full tear of Nick Walker really an excuse for him not to do the Arnold Classic. Now, I understand if his focus is solely on Mr. Olympia, I get that, but he's already in contest shape, basically. He's a couple of weeks out, and Arnold is in like 8-9 weeks. The risk, really, at this point is not that high, and the potential reward is massive so whatever you guys think you can tell me down below i personally believe he should do the Arnold classic and i think he would do really well over there he could win that show but once again whatever you guys think tell me down below in the comment section like this video if you enjoyed it and guys for more bodybuilding content like this subscribe to this channel guys thank you so much for watching see you soon all the best and bye bye